Hey, just got Max and Minions, my copy, and uh, the miniatures are awesome. And these are the pre painted heroes that come in the box, and a buttload of minions. The minions have a wash on them, but are not painted, so that's unacceptable. We gotta paint them. And I think there are four sculpts total. Uh, in this set. Let's see. Yeah, with the axe overhead, there's two of them like that. And then uh, one with the standard pose. I'm guessing there's 25 of each, and then this guy holding his shield. And so, uh, in the actual game, online game, uh, the, the minions are red and blue. And in the, I thought about doing it purple, because in the past some of them were purple. But I think I'm going to just go ahead with red. That might be the simplest. And so what I need to do first, um, I thought about cleaning this stuff off because the miniatures are actually a little bit tacky. Whatever wash that they used for this um, actually does come off. You can. I was brushing it off with a toothbrush and some soap soapy water and it does come off not all the way but you can brush off a lot of it uh, i'm not going to bother with that i'm just going to go ahead and just spray paint uh, with a red primer and then paint them so here's the spray paint that i'm using it's really hard to find a flat red and so even though this red is a little bit darker than i wanted um, it comes in a flat sheen most reds are gloss and i'd rather paint on flat colors uh, and so this is, I got this from Lowe's, um, this is Radiant Red for about five bucks. And the reason why I line up my miniatures like this is because I can get an angle pretty low down here. And what I do is after I spray paint one side, I rotate all of them 90 degrees. And this is about half of them, maybe 50 of the miniatures. And then I'll wait a minute and then basically just rotate them 90 degrees and I'll go around and spray paint the whole thing again, um, making sure that I get a covering on every side. So after spray painting all of these, I'll bring them over to my painting station and I have a, an assembly line going on where I'm painting them in batches of 10. And here are the paints that I'm using. I do have um, miniature paints, but when I'm doing mass uh, production, uh, I just use these cheap ones. And this way, if you are not, or if you're just getting into miniatures painting, uh, you can buy these pretty cheap ones. These are like a dollar each. So you're gonna need black, white. Um, I have two different tints of gray. Uh, this is for the base, which is darker, it's zinc. Um, and then this I use for the shields, uh, which is slate gray. Um, you, you can just use one type of gray if you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'm using dark chocolate for the, their belts. Um, and then uh, just, just buy any kind of green. The green doesn't matter as much. Um, but there are two paints that I would suggest getting the professional paints, um, and that is yellow. Yellow is very hard to find a good tint, and the, these are more expensive, like 250 each, but it has a higher number of, um, oh, I don't know, pigment uh, in it, and so it will actually cover better. Uh, usually yellows and reds are pretty hard to get uh, good coverage, and so whenever I use those two colors, uh, I definitely would suggest um, getting uh, some dedicated miniatures paints rather than getting the craft paints. Uh, and then the other one is just uh, find a metallic, uh, a silver that works well. Uh, again, it's hard to get good coverage. I do have this cheap stuff, um, but it I would have to put like three coats of this on, whereas I can just put one coat of this on. So the goal is basically to be able to paint it like this. Um, and so I'll show you the steps of doing that. Not very hard. 
Uh, and then make sure I just put it on a little plate here. All of my paints. Um, here's water. This is an old um, salsa jar. And then just a napkin here. Um, I'm using a pretty small brush. Uh, but I basically have two brushes, a thicker one like this, and I don't even know what number these are. And I don't pay that much. I buy those packs, multi-packs of brushes that have like 10 of them in a pack for maybe like 4 or $5. So I don't spend a lot on my brushes. But basically two sizes is really all you need. And so uh, basically I'll start off with brown. And it doesn't matter too much what order you go in in terms of color. Uh, and then I'll, I'll um, color in his belt. There's only two things that require brown, or three things actually. His belt, um, the handle of the axe, and then make sure you get both sides of that. I'm trying to keep this in focus. And then the final thing is his top knot, uh, where it attaches to his head. I just put a dab of brown. I know it's I know it's pretty hard to see, so I apologize that the lighting isn't great. But um, that's pretty much it for the brown, and you can barely see it. I know. Um, so rinse out your brush. And then let, let's do black next. And I decided to uh, not go canon with these colors because if you look online, the minions for the actual League of Legends game, um, these minions have gray, uh, but I've chosen to do yellow uh, as a highlight color on the edges of this robe, just because I think it looks better than the gray and I chose just to have the shield remain gray. But um, I also, um, I think in the game, the gloves are gray too, but I like them being part black. So I'll go ahead and color his glove black. And what I'll do later um, is put a stripe of gray right at the edge of his glove just to change it up a little bit and so the biggest thing is um, you just want to make sure you don't have to be super neat you just want to make sure you don't get it on the red uh, oh and you do you might want to get actually some red paint in case you do accidentally get it on the red but that's it for the black is the face and the glove. Um, here, let me try to get it better in better lighting. Uh, and then next, let's go ahead and do the yellow. And these, these smaller paints, because they do have more pigment, you want to shake them up more. They need more shaking than these craft paints here. Uh, especially, again, I find that the yellow requires a lot of shaking. And then the yellow, I am highlighting um, his cowl here. And it's pretty easy because it's raised pretty high. Like this. And you don't have to be super exact, because again, you're painting a hundred of these, right? So, oops, the black isn't quite dry yet. So I want to be careful that I don't uh, run it, hit the black. There, and then um, you want to do these shoulders. There's. Uh, this raised area for the shoulder. 
like I mentioned, I don't bother being super exact. These aren't going to be com for competitive painting or anything like that. And then, the and I make sure that I actually overlap the gem because I'm going to remove the border around the gem. See, this, this yellow strap paint, I have to put on two or three coats of it just, uh, because the quality won't have the same coverage over red. And then also on the back here is uh, this skirt kind of thing that I'm going to treat at the border. And that's it for the yellow. And then now let's do the gray. Uh, and this is the, the lighter gray, slate gray. Usually, um, since I'm doing assembly line with this, um, it's actually happening where all the paints of one color will dry before I move on to another color. Right now it's wet because I'm just sticking to one model to show you, but you do want to make sure that the other colors are dry before you move on to the next one because they'll, they'll run together. And that's not a problem though when you're um, doing assembly line method. Some people will do, you know, maybe five or half a dozen at a time. I like doing um, 10 at a time just because I feel like I'm making some headway because we're going to need to do a hundred of these. So, and when you're using the assembly line method, it goes pretty fast because you're sticking with just one color and you're doing 10 at a time. Um, so I, I use my bigger brush uh, for this gray. If you don't want, if you don't have silver, you can go ahead and use gray for the axe head. But since we have silver, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, and I'm not sure if this is going to work because this glove might not be dry yet. But I put a line here of gray. As the border yeah it's running uh, just a little bit so I'll probably have to go over that once the black is completely dry but just to create a nice little border here and that's it for the gray use a smaller brush for that That's it for that. That was easy. And then um, also his top knot I made white. So see how, um, because most of his body is red, you skip and save a lot of time by priming and spray painting uh, the red on. So I always look at the predominant color of a miniature, and that's the color that I will prime them, because it just saves a lot of time with painting. Uh, let's do silver next. And basically it's just his axe. I could have used a bigger brush for this. Is that in focus? So yeah, depending on um, what part of the miniature that I'm painting to, um, will make, determine the size of the brush that I'm using. So I yeah, definitely would use the bigger brush here. Cause look how long it takes to cover this with my little brush. So that's the silver. So basically grab this uh, darker zinc color of gray. And I found that I have to do two coats of this uh, in order for it to cover the entire base. The other option is to do black. That probably would actually cover on there uh, quicker. So let me grab this guy 
and definitely will use my bigger brush this time and just very easily simply just cover this whole thing like this and I'm basically here and as you can see how streaking red is shining through but shining through that means that you have to do more than one coat so I'll take a pretty much I will um, cover the base so you know how to use your mask to go first time and go back and uh, cover it again so the finished product looks like this guy here and you can actually keep it or stop at this point and put spray on protective spray uh, and I think it would look pretty good here's the pre-painted model um, if I can get it to focus so it looks pretty good right but um, I do want to go ahead and dip it into uh, Minwax for two reasons one is it will provide some shading and it will provide also a protective covering for it. So I'll show you that step next. So I just got done re-spray painting these miniatures because um, I got tired of painting all of those red. So I just picked up some of this blue and I looked for flat. I couldn't find flat so I just went ahead and used this gloss. I think it's called Pool Party. If you wanted, but any any kind of blue will work. I wanted a little bit lighter blue, uh, so I won't go through step by step how I paint these. It's pretty much the same as the red ones. All right, so here I have um, two shades of Minwax Poly shades. This is the one that I use the most, and it's the Antique Walnut. And you want to get the Poly shades one because it actually has polyurethane mixed into it and that's going to give you a nice uh, protective coat on your mini. Um, and then I also have here espresso which is really dark and so just mix these up make sure you mix these up really well I just use a popsicle stick just to make sure all the pigment that's on the bottom gets stirred in and do it for both and I'll show you uh, what it looks like on the mini. So basically I have a bunch of these disposable craft brushes and I think I got 50 of them just for a couple of dollars. Uh, and these are disposable so once I use them I'm going to throw them away. I have a glove on my left hand at least and that's to hold the mini. And I first dip it into the antique walnut because this is going to be most of what I'll be using. And you just want to slather it on. like this and don't be afraid to be liberal with it and I don't actually uh, I avoid putting it on the face and the um, the white um, hair just because it darkens it up too much Put it on everywhere. So it gets into all the nooks and crannies. And this basically just shades, provides a shade and a protect, protective coat uh, for your miniature. The polyurethane is um, thick enough where it will, you can actually throw all these minis together in a box without even protecting it because this polyurethane is so thick. So once once I get um, most of the mini, I'll actually now dip in the espresso, and this is like super dark. And so because I want the base to be a little darker, um, and, and it's sort of running into the first layer of antique walnut, because I don't want it to be pure strength, and I suppose you could just mix it up, um, but this is just as easy. And then some spots where I want it a little darker, I'll go ahead and run it in like that. And then the shield, uh, where I do want it a little darker, I'll also darken it up like that. Just like that. And then... Make sure you have the base where you're holding it. Um, 
you covered all the spots. And then once you're done, that's it. Here I'll show you a comparison between this one and this one. So you can see that it darkens it up quite a bit and provides shading as it goes in the nooks and crannies. So this is a super simple way to provide shading. Again, you don't really have to, do, you can skip this step and just spray protective spray over it. But I just like how it provides that extra punch to have the shading. And so here's, I'll show you the difference between this and a red one. So here you see a comparison of the two. So yeah, um, and you'll notice that it's super glossy and it does dry with this high gloss and so you'll need to spray dull coat on it and I'll show you what that looks like later. But that's what it looks like. So after painting and dipping these guys, um, you can see how shiny this is. And that's because of the polyurethane that's on there. Um, and what we want to do is we want to make it dull like this so it's not shiny. And so the way that you do that is you spray it with dull coat. So that's this stuff here. And this is the best um, spray that I found because other sprays actually don't work as well. So I know this is expensive, but this actually is the best results that I have found. So we're just going to put two coats of this on to all of the minis.